everybody what's going on and welcome back to Critical Reviews. Today on the segment we're going to be talking about part three of the gamers movies called The Gamers Hands of Fate. When Cass sets his eye on scoring a date with Natalie, one of the world's top Romance of the Nine Empires players, she issues him a challenge to show that he's gamer enough to win this year's national championship. Determined to prove that he can win any game, Cass enlists fellow gamer Leo to teach him everything he needs to know about the collectible card game. But the Legacy, a group of hardcore gamers with an evil plan, has raised an army of the undead to win the game for themselves. As a semi-retired gamer, I have to say this, these movies hit a little bit close to home. That being said, I love these movies. While yes, there still is the fantasy cutaways that made these movies great, the overall story seems to, well, tell it like it is. The main core gaming group from Dorkness Rising are all still together, but as with all things, life gets in the way. Teased in the last movie, Lodge and Joanna are now a real couple, Leo's store is busier than ever now that he's let card games be played in it, and Gary has a very important job now, plus is obsessed with a Pokemon-style cartoon that got his favorite cartoon canceled. Cass is the only one that really seems to have nothing standing in his way of gaming. That is, until he meets Natalie, of course. While yes, like the other movies, this one still makes a little bit of lighthearted humor about gamers, a lot of the real life story they tell is all too true sometimes. Let me ask you this, older gamers especially, how many times has a game gotten canceled because one player had to say, go to work, watch their kid, had a date, you get the idea. Along with the real life stuff, the game also goes into multiple fantasy worlds this time around. While I did enjoy both worlds, at first I was a bit thrown off by this movie's unbalanced focus on the new world and not the one we, as fans of this series, were familiar with. When you realize that this is on purpose and plays into the real-life story, it makes a lot more sense. The story as a whole is a bit more centered on the character of Cass this time around, while the other gamers play more of a supporting role. While I was okay with this, I kind of wish the other players could have played more of an important role like they did in Darkness Rising. That being said, the card game that Cass is playing is a one-on-one -on -one game, so the focus had to be singular. Also, he is arguably the most charismatic of the group. About this new world, while there was some silliness happening in it, most of the time it is taken dead serious, and in some ways, literally. For fans of the series, this can throw you off for a bit, but again, the filmmakers did this on purpose. The fans of the movie's card game take it very serious, and while the real-life stuff surrounding the game is pretty silly, the events happening in the game's story are world-changing for them. I have to say, I think the balance of silly to serious worked pretty well in this movie. For me, the coolest thing about this movie is where they shot most of it. I have to give the filmmakers all the credit in the world to be able to shoot a lot of their movie at the real Gen Con 2012 convention. While I've never been to Gen Con itself, I have been to that very convention center in Indiana for cons before. I can't imagine how they were able to block off the craziness of the convention to film anything. Sometimes being in those conventions feels like you're being herded like cattle. The other reason that I really like this part of the movie is that it just added to the realistic feel of the real life stuff in the movie. If you couldn't already tell, I highly recommend this movie as much as I recommended the other two. Like the other two movies, if you want to see this one, it's not too hard to find on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you've seen The Gamer's Hands of Fate, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Till next time, I'm Gino Reynolds from The Real Gino.